G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. In this upcoming video, which I had uploaded to YouTube last night, which I've, I've taken down and will put this video up in its place, I was showing how to add sort of more to detail and sort of try to enhance the brickwork on your uh, on your MDF model kits. And I'd use this, this wall from our 89 Moore Street kit as an example. And during the process of editing that video and, and playing around, I've got a couple of other ideas about how we can go about doing this that might be even easier. So um, I will upload the, this method that I've just done, but you know I've cut a whole bunch of small, just like little test wall pieces, which I can use in subsequent videos after this one to show different techniques that I think, you know, well, yeah, different techniques. You know, some work for some people and some don't work for other people. But I've got a few other ideas, so I'm going to try these on these pieces and we'll film those videos separately and I'll upload them later. But in the meantime, here's that video that was uploaded yesterday with the technique that I used to do this wall section here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. See ya. G'day everyone, Viv here. I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back. It's time to have a look at a very simple uh, technique for creating a very effective brick. Uh, texture is not the right word, but detail, I suppose. Um, we've had many, many requests for how we create or how we paint our, our models, uh, specifically the sort of the very brick intensive kits from Old Town, uh, from Century City Old Town. Uh, let's just get on with it. It's very, very quick, it's very, very simple, and you won't believe the secret ingredient. You'll be raiding your kids' bins buckets for uh, a long time to come. Let's check it out. So, for this tutorial, we're going to create or we're going to use this wall it's from one of our kits from our old town uh, specifically the 89 Moore Street uh, and you'll see a full tutorial for how we painted that model in an upcoming video uh, but since we use this technique quite a lot I thought we should a very separate video this uh, this piece is quite simply being sprayed black with um, British paints spray easy the flat back flat black variant uh, it's a great base primer it costs about eight dollars from Bunnings um, but it's the best primer that we've used and then that brown color is uh, from um, S, uh, is it S80 paints? I think it's S80 paints um, which I picked up from uh, one of the art stores that specialize in uh, spray cans for uh, graffiti and street artists um, this is the uh, A53A brown color and so that's all I've done so far I don't feel the need to have to show you uh, <laughs> those two steps it's very simple spray it black and then spray it brown Next step is to do some dry brushing. For that we're going to use uh, this colour here, it's exotic terracotta red, um, number what, 140 from British Paints. Uh, and the colour that you use is, is totally up to you. So we're going to use this colour, then we're going to use a highlight of this like tan colour. I don't know what this is, this will also be one of the colours from British Paints. Um, that we pick up little sample pots like this size or the ones this is 250 milliliters or the 500 milliliter uh, sample pots that this costs five dollars and 25 cents um, and it will go a long long way so let's get on with those steps in this little tutorial okay so the first step is to dry brush our model with the terracotta red because in this example I mean in the colors that you choose um, we want a reddish sort of brick color just a tiny little bit of paint on the brush and then obviously um, as you do with all dry brushing you want to try and get rid of most of that paint and then with this uh, dry brush little crosses all over the whole the whole model now in circumstances where you end up with those sorts of streaky bits of paint that you can see up here just rub those back with your finger to help blend those in and then come back and you know keep going so there we go we've ended up with our reddish color on there now we want to give it a little highlight before we can get to doing our brickwork so I'm going to use some of my highlight colour without cleaning my brush. I just need a very, very small amount of paint. And I haven't cleaned my brush because I'm going to end up with sort of a blend. You know, I'm slowly going to lighten my original terracotta colour. 
And as usual, just uh, clean off your dry brush, dry it out, and then come back. And again, we're gonna go, we're gonna go down our model. Essentially, we wanna dry brush this thing again, but we wanna make sure that we focus on the top of the brick as best as we can. Okay, so I'm happy with that. There we've got our little highlight color on there. You know, it's not massively noticeable, but from the, uh, the beginning that we started with, it's, it's, it's noticeable. Okay, let's get to our, that, that brick texture or that brick coloring. First thing we're gonna want is a rag, a damp rag. This is not wet. You just want something that's, you know, damp. So wet it, wring it out really well. Second thing is either from your kids, uh, box or from your craft store or whatever oh, chalk could it be so simple yes it really is now obviously sitting right here is the one that I've already used it's on top but you know you've got so many different colors here um, for you know you're doing sci-fi terrain or, or something like that this is this is great stuff it's super cheap I mean, this whole bucket of, of or box of chalk comes in one pack it costs a couple of dollars is it really this simple? It is. Start with one small section first and um, just quite literally apply a heavy amount of chalk and then rub it around with your finger. You're rubbing that chalk A into the brickwork and A into the surface of the model. This is where your wet rag now comes in and just gently, very very gently just start to wipe the chalk away and as you can see you'll take away a lot more chalk than what is left behind so just be very gentle just be very careful and you'll end up with this color in your brickwork is it that simple yes it is there's one thing that you need to be aware of which we'll come back to let me just finish this piece and then uh, we'll come back Righto, so I've finished the whole piece and I've dried it with a hairdryer. Now you can see the chalk is leaving a whole bunch of residue behind. Not fantastically nice. So there's two things we need to do about this. One is continue to clean this with that damp rag very carefully. And the second one is to come back and do a dry brush afterwards. So when I'm at this stage, I just want to very carefully with that damp rag, just wipe this back down again. It is important to re allow this to dry between layers of your, uh, your chalk. Otherwise the, the moisture from this rag is going to dry, uh, is going to cause the, the paint to, or the, the chalk to really um, glug up properly. All right, so it doesn't look too bad. Let's dry it again. Okay, so I've wiped it off again and it does look somewhat better, but every time I wipe it, I'm losing chalk from the detail. Now, at this point, I'm pretty much ready to move to the next step, which is a very quick, simple dry brush again of our colors, just to take off that, that you know, that, that residual sort of color from the chalk. There we go. So we're starting to look a little bit better if we come a bit further back. I know the light's not fantastic, but you can see it's not as bad as it was, and it's slowly getting better. Now this process we just continue to repeat back and forward until we get the amount of, of sort of mortar in the brickwork as you like. You can see on this side here that you know, I might add a little bit more in here. So back and forward we go until we end up with what we're looking for. Righto, so there we go. I'm fairly happy with that. We've, I've gone through with my dry brush. I did a, um, two more layers of, of the chalk. Wipe it off. Another dry brush. A little bit of chalk. Wipe it off. And you can see there's a, there's a bunch of different sorts of variation in the color. The staining, so to speak, from the chalk is still present in some places, but you know, that contributes to the differences in the bricks, which I think works quite nicely. So there's a very quick, simple way to do um, that mortar inside the brick and really give it at least somewhat of a, of a realistic effect with very, very little work. 
there we go. You could spend a lot longer doing this. Um, there are a whole bunch of wonderful sites out there on the internet uh, that at least show you um, sort of very realistic sort of buildings. Um, from this distance, I know you can't see very much on camera, but you know, on a gaming table, this looks good. Throw some graffiti on it and all that sort of stuff and, you know, I think it would look wonderful. Anyway, there's a very quick, simple technique that you can use to add some mortar and some very sort of, um, you know, interesting effects to your brickwork. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. See ya.